Hello, I'm Alex. Today I'm going to talk about our work to extend HEProxy functionality with filters written in the Rust programming language. This topic is a continuation of my previous 2021 presentation, where I spoke about implementing fetches, converters, tasks, and services in Rust through the Lua API. Each proxy serves tens of thousands of requests per second, and every request is processed by logic written in Rust, and this approach demonstrated fantastic results and stability. Since then, the HEProxy team released new versions 2.5 and 2.6 that adds an experimental Lua API to work with filters. And today I'll show you how to use the new capabilities to achieve even more with an example of adding broadly compression support to HEProxy. Before we start, let's go back to last year's presentation. Rust is a multi-paradigm general-purpose programming language that emphasizes performance, type safety, and concurrency. Rust enforces memory safety, which means that all references point to valid memory, without requiring to use a garbage collector or reference counting, which is present in other memory-safe languages. To simultaneously enforce memory safety and prevent concurrent data races, Rust uses the concept of ownership and borrowing, and tracks the object lifetime and variable scope of all references in a program during compilation. In 2021, Rust Foundation was established with five founding corporate members, which includes Amazon Web Services, Google, Mozilla, and Microsoft. In addition to that, Rust will be included into Linux kernel 6.1. At the time of recording this presentation, Linus Torvalds released the release candidate version of Linux kernel for everyone to test, which includes initial Rust support. With this base, new drivers, subsystems, and kernel models are expected to land in kernel via Rust. This language is also a great candidate to use for extending HEProxy. HEProxy exposes Lua API that can be utilized by models written in Rust using the HEProxy API crates and some Lua. Actions, converters, fetches, tasks, services, and since 2.5 filters can be entirely written in Rust or use chunks of Rust code. HEProxy made it efficient by running Lua VM per each thread without needing to share a single VM as it was before the 2.4 version. HEProxy filters is a low-level mechanism to extend HEProxy without touching its core code and sometimes without knowing its internals. They were introduced in 1.7 to simplify HEProxy by adding a new abstraction and replacing some parts by filters. To support filters, many callbacks have been added to HEProxy at different places, mainly around channel analyzers. The purpose is to allow filters to be involved in the data processing, from the stream creation, distractions to data forwarding. A filter can implement all or part of those callbacks. An example of functionality added using filters is HTTP compression, distributed tracing, stream processing of load engine, and so on. On this slide, we can see a very simplified filter workflow. For example, attach is called after a filter instance creation when it's attached to a stream. At this stage, it's possible to ignore the filter if needed. Stream start is called when a stream is started and so on. The most important part is data filtering. By default, filters do not look into data exchange between the client and the server because it's too expensive. Instead, filters must register the interest by calling a special function called register data filter. HTTP data filtering is more complex because inside HEProxy the data are structured and represented through an internal format called HTX. For HTTP streams, HEProxy calls HTTP header callback just before the body forwarding and after any processing on the request response HTTP headers. 
this callback is always called for HTTP streams when defined whereas payload or body filtering must be registered. In reality, this diagram is more complex and it includes front-end and back-end level filtering steps. Starting from HProxy 2.5, there are two ways to write filters. The first one is using the low-level C API, is the unsafe way, and another one is using the high-level Lua API, the safe way. On the slide, you can see a comparison table of those two ways. In the HProxy source code, you can find a set of C headers that describes HProxy internal data structures and functions that can be used to write filters. Usually, C filters are compiled into HProxy binary. As a benefit, they have little to none overhead, but the main disadvantage is that you need to write relatively low level code in C and be familiar with the HProxy's internal API. Any wrong construction can crush your HU proxy, cause indefinite behavior or corrupt memory. As an alternative, HU proxy provides a high-level API to declare filters using Lua. The filters can be dynamically loaded and rely on the API stability and safety. Unfortunately, this has non-zero costs and you should expect extra data copying between HU proxy and Lua. Plus, Lua is language with automatic memory management through garbage collection, which is unfortunately also applicable to its API. And on this slide, Rust appears on the scene. We can leverage the high-level approach and connect it with Rust, achieving performance and safety altogether. We can gain access to thousands of great Rust grades for our needs, be it cryptography, algorithms, and so on. In the MLUA and HProxy API crates, they provide a statically typed interface to define filters. Filters itself are a very dangerous mechanism even when using the high-level approach. For example, it's very easy to accidentally terminate a stream even without identifying the client with 5xx error just by throwing an exception or returning a better result from a filtering function. The Rust interface to write filters is more safe and can automatically handle such situation to continue request or response processing. On this slide, we can see a Rust trait used to write filters. Traits are similar to what is called interface in other languages. By implementing this trait, we can add a new filter. There are a few callbacks that you can attach when writing a filter, but only a new function is required just to make a new instance. As you can see, all the input arguments and output results are typed. For example, transaction, channel, or HTTP message. This enumeration defines the output results of filter callback. It can either be continue when the step is finished or wait, for example, to wait for an external event or error to trigger an error. On the next, on the next slide, there is a simple example of a filter that prints a message to a console depending on the input data, was it request or response. The filter is built upon an empty strand and has two callbacks. The first one is to create a filter instance, and the second one is called by HProxy after processing HTTP headers. HProxy passes an HTTP message instance that can be used to read or manipulate headers and so on. On the last line, we can see the filter registration step. We provide a filter class and the name to HProxy. The filter can be turned on by his name, your backend, or frontend. Plus, you can pass arguments to just filter behavior. Also, given that it's technically a lower filter, we need to lower to lower file per each proxy thread. And now let's talk about the real case example that we developed a web based company that connects people with great local businesses. We always look for ways to optimize the infrastructure and make it more efficient. Broadly is a good example of such optimization. Broadly is a modern, generic-purpose lossless compression algorithm developed by Google. 
It was first released in 2013 for offline compression of web fonts. Then the Berkeley specification was generalized in September 2015 for HTTP stream compression. This generalized iteration also improved the compression ratio by using a predefinite dictionary which contains over 30,000 frequently used words, phrases, or other substrings derived from a large subset of text and HTML documents. Now, Broadly is primarily used by web servers and content delivery networks, or CDN, to compress HTTP content, making websites load faster. It also helps to reduce the cost of networking traffic. Broadly has many options to tune and on average provides a better compression ratio than gzip with comparable speed. Below on the slide you can see results of compressing one of Yale pages with Broadly and gzip. The Broadly parameters were tuned to match the speed of compression of the gzip level 6. Broadly support has been added over the years for web browsers with 96% of, of worldwide users using a browser that supports the format as of mid-2022. Unfortunately, Broadly support is not yet available in HProxy and this is perfect candidate to be implemented as a filter. This example illustrates two structures that we defined in Rust to implement the filter trait. As you can see, the filter can be conditionally enabled, for example, when a client declares Broadly support. Also, we are going to support various options to tune Broadly, such as quality or compression level, window size, list of content types, and so on. One of the options I want to emphasize is offloading. By using an offload mode, we can take work to compress responses from backend servers to ourselves. It works by stripping the accept encoding HTTP header when proxying request to upstream. Then our filter needs a stage to process request headers where we actually can evaluate conditions to enable it or disable it. In this example, we support only GET requests from clients and that have preferred broadly over other encoding methods. The next stage is analyzing response headers. We encode only responses with status code equals to 200. We need to skip encoding when the server sends the content encoding header just to avoid double encoding. If cache control no transform is present, then we also shouldn't modify the response, bo the response body and forward it unmodified. If everything else meets our criteria to compress the payload, we need to execute steps such as deleting content lens header, setting content encoding to BR, switching to chunked transfer encoding, and so on. And the last step is registering a data filter to perform body encoding. At the next stage of payload filtering, we read response body chunk by chunk, feed them to encoder and return the result. Our encoder works in streaming mode and keeps the information about previously encoding chunks to build a dynamic dictionary and do other essential work. With the last chunk, each proxy sends a special EOM flag, is end of message, which should be used to flush the encoder and build the final chunk to finish encoding. This is an example of setting up our broadly filter in a proxy section and passing various parameters. We can control the quality level, list of content type prefixes, offload mode, and so on. What is more important is that we can achieve a fantastic flexibility by adding logic to check each proxy variables to dynamically control broadly. For example, we can add conditions to enable our filter for only specific user agents or only for traffic to a specific endpoint, and so on. The Broadly compression model is open source. Please check it together with the HProxy API crate that I maintain, where you can also find other examples of models built in Rust. And the final bit is caveats. 
The Lua filter API is a relatively new addition to each proxy and has experimental status and is not recommended for production use. Also, it requires HEProxy 2.6.7 or above, since this release contains some important fixes in lower filters implementation. But Yelp is broadly supporting experimental mode for a portion of traffic and collecting metrics to monitor its stability. However, the foundation added to HEProxy is fantastic, and we're always looking forward to new features available through the Lua API. That's all. Um, thanks for your attention, and I'm looking forward to answering your questions. And thank you to Alex, and I think we have him joining us live. So, Alex, are you able to hear me? If you have a yes. question. Hello, everyone. Hello. Oh, there we see you. Hello, Alex. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so if you do have a question, uh, please just raise your hand. We'll come around to you. We just have a couple minutes here. Uh, as a reminder, online you can submit them in the stream chat. We did have a couple questions come in as you were speaking. One is about your GitHub project. So you showed at the end, this was before that. I know you mentioned the Brotly module on GitHub. But someone asked, um, do you share your GitHub, uh, sorry, do you share your projects on GitHub? And where can we go to find more information on that? Yes, this is correct. Um, there's uh, like few models you can find at all the source code. It's also published on the crates.io um, website. It's a Rust um, registry for all the packages. So, and the usage is like one comment in console. All simple. Excellent. And I know you linked in your slides, and we'll, we'll share those with everyone so you can find the link there. We have a question from the live audience. Yeah, thank you for this uh, presentation. I was curious, uh, do you have some numbers to provide regarding the potential latency added uh, whenever you use uh, this filter in your case? Um, we specifically tuned broadly parameter to match the latencies with gzip. Um, on average, it really depends on the content size, but um, I can say is like one millisecond, or it really depends on the content type. So it's just usually a few milliseconds. Okay, so in fact, um, my my question is also, um, do you consider using this filter for this usage of uh, compressing as something to be used in production, or is it something more experimental from your point of view? in terms of um, like the override which is added uh, to your traffic, the, the potential override which is added to your traffic? Um, at the moment, the HEProxy 2.6.7 is not yet released, and um, we are waiting for the release, and then we will start gradually rolling out the broad support to the um, wider audience. So we'll the filter basically to use it in, in our production traffic, yes. Thank you. Great. So that's all the time we have for Q&A. Alex, thank you again so much for